Hey guys, I'm Speak Communications, and uh, welcome to my rant on what has to be one of the fucking shitty, most shitty fucking, one of the shittiest movies I've seen in years. I mean, this isn't really trash cinema, because, I mean, it's a newer movie, so I thought I'd just fucking, you know, call it just a regular rant. But, God damn it, this movie fucking sucks, dick. <laughs> um, and the movie I'm talking about is The Devil Inside. Yeah, the 2012 pile of shit. It was, came out in 2011, actually. No, it came out this 2000, the same on January this year. Um, I don't believe it's on DVD yet, but Matt found a little link on VHD, and, well, I actually watched it with Matt, actually, a couple nights ago, and, uh, <laughs> this, this movie just sucks. An hour and 15 minutes of just garbage. I mean... The inside, the inside of my ass is probably, you know, the contents of the inside of my own asshole are probably a lot more entertaining to look at and also probably a lot more terrifying than this movie. Um, it's, it's like a found footage film, you know, with, you know, exorcist, you know, exorcist elements. So, you know, we already had a found footage film with Exorcist Elements and The Last Exorcism. But for some reason, some uh, poor soul decided to uh, waste a million dollars and make this piece of shit movie. And then also, of course, well, you know, hey, I, I guess, you know, um, a lot of kids, you know, and teenagers and whoever, a lot of the audience, you know, in January... There's not that many movies on, so The Devil Inside was like the first horror film in a while, so they paid their money for it. So the movie ended up making a profit. It was made for like a million dollars and made $53 million. Takes a lot. So anyway, um, I guess uh, today's generation uh, uh, stopped uh, f trying you know, to figure out new ways to get high and, and decided to go see The Devil Inside. Or they probably choked themselves before they saw it. You're probably like, why are you talking about people choking themselves? I'm just saying, I think I understand why today's generation is so indifferent and is seems to be giving all this money to these mediocre, shitty movies. And uh, it's because they're, they're more worried about finding new ways to get high. Choking each other to get high. S sniffing fucking helium. Uh, fucking smoking incense. I'm not saying every everybody you know, new teenager or young adult is doing that, but you know, it doesn't certainly help matters much when you're fucking going to see the devil inside and giving this film a month some money. I mean, it's not like the producers of this shitty movie needed money. This film needed to flop, and it needed to flop badly. It did not need to make any profit, but th since it did. We'll probably get more movies from these fucking producers who couldn't tell you who, who really couldn't fucking find their own f they couldn't find their own fucking kid if they lost their kids in a fucking restroom and what I'm talking about like if they lost their kids in the restroom at the mall they couldn't find them you know because they're too dumb to check the stalls anyway this movie is it's directed by fucking William Brent Bell. It's also written by William Brent Bell and Matthew Peterman. William Brent Bell, let's see what this guy has done before. Alright, let's see. Oh, the fucking director of Stay Alive. Yeah, that's great. We yeah, wow. Yeah, the director he, his directorial debut was a movie called Sparkle and Charm, and then he directed Stay Alive. So the same guy who brought the fucking awful fucking video game horror film Stay Alive directed this piece of shit. Yeah, great. Like, that guy needed another fucking job. So anyway, it stars Fernanda Andrade as Isabella Rossi. Simon Quarterman and Father Ben Rawlings, even Helmut as Father David Keane, Ewanette Grama as Michael Schaefer, Susan Crowley as uh, Maria Rossi, 
Born Bonnie Morgan as Rosa, Brian Johnson as Lieutenant Dreyfus, and a bunch of other fucking no-name actors. Now, basically, this movie starts out... Well, for Matt and I, we're watching it, and it's so fucking blurry, so... To start off with, so we're like, come on, focus! Focus! Get into focus! <laughs> anyway, once it finally got into focus, you see this aftermath of this brutal murder, of a uh, brutal triple murder of these uh, priests... So you see these religious, you know, uh, people, you know, basically were murdered brutally. You know, there's blood everywhere, you know. But for some reason, the filmmaker decided, I'm going to have some fucking CSI type cut scene here with some fucking idiot talking in a microphone, talking about, looks like they had multiple uh, facial wounds. And then uh, this one looks like he was, his throat was slit. And I'm like, I, I, I get it. Yeah, I understand. Uh. Yeah, it's pretty fucking obvious his throat was slit. So anyway, you get... Then you cut to, like, some news story. Some, like, uh, footage from, like, some uh, news, you know, local news channel. You know, local 6 o'clock news, basically. And there's this guy talking about the murders and how, you know, it, it appears that these three religious guys were murdered by uh, Maria Rossi... While, uh, basically, while she was being exercised. So she was basically getting, you know, having an exorcism done in her. And she flipped out and killed these three guys. So basically, the whole rest of the movie centers around her daughter. Uh, play, you know, Fernanda Andrade, played by Isabel, you know, Isabel Rossi. It centers around her daughter, Isabel Rossi. Trying to figure out what happened to her mother and why she got sent to Rome instead of, you know, to a regular prison or insane asylum here in the United States. And so basically it goes from found, it, it jumps back and forth from found footage to documentary, which is not a fucking good idea. Because for one, it's not very clever, it's kind of fucking stupid, for one, to go, you know, go back and forth from found footage to fucking documentary style filmmaking. It's kind of fucking disorientating. And honestly a pretty fucking stupid. In my opinion anyway. So anyway. This movie is only an hour and 15 minutes folks. But in all honesty. I'd rather spend an hour and 15 minutes. Getting fucked gently with a chainsaw. Because that would be. Uh, that would be a hell of a lot more fucking entertaining. At least I keep my eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean really the whole film centers around she goes to Rome to go basically look into the school of exorcism which I'm like is there really a school of exorcism I mean I really find it hard pressed to believe that the Catholic Church was even allowed this filmmaker in here to film a documentary about the exorcisms you know going on in the Catholic Church in Rome because they already know that it's already controversial enough. They don't want any more crap in their fucking face, really. I think the Catholic Church, people are already, you know, thinking they're a bit crazy. You know, they want they want this fucking documentary to make it pass, you know, make it into people's homes. I don't think so. So, basically, you have the School of Exorcism, which sounds like a fucking horror film in itself. You know, Jesus Fagos, the school of exorcism. I swear to God, I think there is a horror film about the school of exorcism. I know there's Satan's school for girls, so wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, at this school of exorcism, she meets these other priests. Um, the guy was telling you about Simon Quarterman and Evan Helmuth. And, you know, in the drama... So then she meets Father Ben Rawlings, <laughs> Rawlings, David Keane, who's the same fucking name as the guy who's a screenwriter and uh, the player, interesting, Inuit Grandma who plays Michael Schaefer. So she meets Father Ben Rawlings, Father David Keane, and Michael Schaefer, who's this guy who's basically a skeptic and doesn't believe any of this exorcism stuff. And Father David Keen and Ben Rawlings, I guess what they do is they do these secret exorcisms. So they go around and they do these illegal exorcisms on the side uh, without the church's consent. Of with, you know, you know, 
basically they exercise uh, victims that, you know, or people that they think, you know, really could use their help. Now, that in itself sounds like it might be an interesting idea, but here lies the problem with this film. The execution fucking blows. Okay? It is so goddamn dull and boring. I mean, it just nothing... The, the pace is to absolutely awful. Okay? I mean, it's it, it moves along at a snail's pace. There's too many moments of basically people just talking... And it just fucking drains you as a viewer. Because you're just like, shut the fuck up. I don't give a fuck. I don't really care. Can we get into some sort of exorcism here? This is called the devil inside. Where the hell is the devil? So anyway, the, you know, the, the demon finally, they finally encounter something out of the ordinary. At one of these, uh... Uh, you know, legal exorcisms that they're doing when they start, you know, basically exercising this young woman. And that's about 40 minutes into the movie. And basically what she does is she starts, you know, you know oh, of course, before that you had uh, the daughter meeting her mother in the in the insane asylum. But that, that was pretty fucking laughable. She starts going like... <laughs> And it's supposed to be scary, but it's fucking laughable. And really what it sounds like... And I, I'll give you know credit to Matt for this one. We're watching and Matt's like, Connect the dots, connect the dots, connect the dots. <laughs> then she like lifts up her arm and she's got upside down crosses on her. And she's got crosses in her lips and stuff or whatever. And it's supposed to be terrifying. And she yells and screams and carries on. And talks about her artwork. And she talks in different voices. Like she has multiple personality disorders. And, of course, her daughter's freaked out. And so that's when she goes to the school of exorcism to try to get some help. And then you get into 40 minutes later, you get into the whole first exorcism sequence. This is 40 minutes in in an hour and 15 minute movie. I mean, that's fucking unacceptable. If the movie was an hour and if the movie was two hours, then that would be acceptable. But if it's 40 minutes in and you finally get to something interesting, that's not good. So anyway... It's not really that interesting either. So for some reason it seems that these exorcists are also doctors. They must have gotten some doctorate degree. I don't know where they learned how to, you know, use the doctor, you know, medical equipment they use in this film. But I guess they went to medical school on the side as well. So basically they're also, you know, putting on EKGs on this woman. The fucking camera has a, has a pan shot, you know, from a point of view from her eyeball. That I don't know how the fuck they got it because for one, I don't know where the extra camera is that these filmmakers are using. So that's just breaking a law of found footage films right off the bat there. Using fucking cameras that, you know, you don't, you, the viewer, don't even you don't know fucking exist. So then, uh, she basically flips out this, uh, chick and she starts, like, contorting her body. So that's the whole, you know, example of the possession angle. She starts contorting her body. Just kind of like, you know, some fucking, you know, circus performer, which really isn't that scary. And then she starts going flipping out, and they try to, you know, restrain her to the bed. And, like, I think she starts swearing and putting up a storm, you know, making a scene. And then all of a sudden, you see her pants, you know, where her you know, hoo-ha is. It's covered in blood. So all of a sudden, basically, she's all getting in a struggle, and she basically, you know, uh, starts shooting blood out of her cooch, and you're probably, you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's not really terrifying. It's just, it's just kind of, it's just kind of just surprising. All of a sudden, I'm watching with the man, I was like, oh my god, she's bleeding out of her cooch. <laughs> so I was just like, what the fuck? So then basically, she... I guess what happens when, when you get possessed if you're a woman, I guess you have the mother of all periods. I don't understand. There's no explanation for it. So basically, they actually end up driving the demon, so-called demon, out of her. And...